What's up guys, it's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's time for What the Paul Saladino. Oh wait, I'm just kidding. It's time for What the Fitness. And this week we have back on the show, Paul Saladino. Because every time he opens his mouth, bullshit falls out. He's talking about diet soda. Gee, I wonder what he's going to say. Diet Coke versus Coke Zero. What's the difference? Neither of these has any calories from sugar. Most people think they're good for weight loss. Totally wrong. These are both horrible for satiety, At least he's horrible got a shirt for on. insulin signaling, and horrible for glucose tolerance. Check <laughs> this out. Diet Coke contains aspartame, a substance that has been shown to induce anxiety in animal studies which is heritable. Anxiety which is passed on for two generations when mice are given small doses of aspartame that are far below the FDA maximum. Coke Zero contains aspartame, but it also contains ACE-K, yet another horrible artificial sweetener that induces neurometabolic changes in animal studies. Why would you drink At least you mentioned they were animal artificial studies. sweeteners that we know can induce neurometabolic changes, anxiety in animal models, disrupt your gut microbiome, disrupt quorum sensing, impair glucose tolerance when you could just eat things like fruit and honey if you want something sweet or coconut water. These are not helping you with weight loss. They are sabotaging your progress. These are both horrible options. If only we had human randomized, oh wait, we have human randomized control trials where they give diet sodas and look at whether or not people lose or gain weight. What do the human randomized control trials say? I'm so glad you asked. In a recent meta-analysis of randomized control trials where sugar sweetened beverages are substituted with diet beverages, they found actually that diet beverages caused significant weight loss. Further, when compared against water, diet beverages were still superior for causing weight loss. But Paul said they're terrible for satiety. So if they're terrible for satiety, that means people would eat more when they're consuming diet beverages. But since diet beverages cause more weight loss than water, that must mean diet beverages are actually fat burners. I'm just saying, if we play this logic out, that's what it says. Do I think diet beverages are fat burners? No, I do not. They're not fat burners. They cause people to eat less calories. This idea that they're bad for satiety is complete nonsense not supported by the data, and once again, in fact, when you compare them with water, they're actually as good or a little bit better than water on reducing calorie intake. The direct human randomized control trials do not support what you are saying, Paul. So you have to pull high dose mice studies out of your anus in order to support what you want to be true. He's pulling out in vitro studies in a petri dish, rodent models where they feed hundreds or thousands of times the dosage of aspartame and then they go, oh, this looks weird. Well, no sh Why don't we see these things in humans? Oh, I don't know, because it doesn't seem to matter in humans. Now, if you don't like diet beverages and you don't want to drink them, then don't drink them. I don't care, but stop saying BS about this stuff. His claims that they're terrible for satiety, obviously not true because people don't eat more when they're drinking diet beverages. They actually eat less even compared to water, Paul. Two, the idea they're gonna induce anxiety. Where is the human data? You're pulling out an in vitro study looking at aspartame and its effects on parts of the amygdala when it's fed at huge doses. Exactly what the f does that have to do with humans consuming a few diet sodas per day? It has zero relevance. And I invite you to find any clinical data demonstrating that providing diet sodas compared to placebo causes anxiety. Good luck. And this idea that it's bad for insulin sensitivity, also not true. If we look at the studies where they compare diet soda consumption to water, we basically see no difference. So it does not negatively impact insulin sensitivity. And if it helps people lose weight, it can actually improve insulin sensitivity. Now again, I am not pro diet soda. I mean, I drink diet soda. Paul will probably say I'm getting paid by the big diet soda lobby. I freaking wish, because then at least I could make some money off my diet soda consumption, but I don't. If you want to find a study to support what you want to believe to be true, you can always find an animal study or a study in a petri dish to support some mechanism of what you want to believe to be true. But if we look at the 
actual human randomized control trials. It doesn't hold up. So I don't know how much more clearly I can say this. Paul either is not aware of this human data, which is disturbing, or he is aware of it and he doesn't care because it doesn't fit his agenda. Neither situation is very palatable because in one he's just ignorant and the other one he's a liar. So you guys pick. I'm sorry if it feels like I'm being mean to Paul. I have just seen enough of him blatantly ignoring human data that I'm quite frankly sick of it because this man has made a lot of money, by the way, with Liver King as his business partner, who he claims, I had no idea he was on steroids. Okay, Paul, this man has made a lot of money spreading false information. And quite frankly, I'm fucking done with it. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next week.